what's up good looking people yeah, and happy holidays and Merry Christmas to you guys. Uh, I wanted to give you a cool present. If you have not already read it, this book, written by me, it's quite good. So I'm giving away some free digital copies. And I think uh, we all know 2020 has been fucking crazy. And I think 2021 is actually going to be crazier. I think you guys are going to look back at 2020 and go, remember when it was only like lightly crazy? Um this book is really set up to help you with that. I remember when I went through all this in my agency in 2008, I wish I had known what I know now uh, in order to do that. So you guys can grab a copy. If you want, just send me a message and I'll send you a digital copy. Or as well, you can go to beyondagencyprofits.com and download a free copy. And uh, my woman just bought, brought me a green juice, so thank you for that. Anywho, let's get into some questions. I know it's uh, Christmas, so I'm going to keep it nice and short. I know you guys got a lot of things going on. Tanner says, can I help restaurants by doing Facebook ads right now? Lots of restaurants I talked to said the budget isn't here anymore. I also lost all my clients who are restaurants. Which niches can I look for in 2021? Tanner, or Tanner, restaurants are certainly hit harder than other businesses. But, and this is a big but, is your question implies that the success or failure comes down to the niche you choose and whether or not you use Facebook ads. And I promise you it's not that. There's a deeper ideology, and I, I go into it in the book, but it's about being a source of cash for businesses. And what that means is if you think about your average restaurant, they're always obsessed with bringing in new people, new people, new people, and they do almost nothing to retain those people. So your chances are those restaurants are sitting on a mountain of customers that more than likely they could deliver stuff to, like using something like Uber Eats or whatever, and they're just not because they don't really know it's on the table. So the best thing you can do is not trying to use Facebook ads and running cold traffic and bringing them more strangers, but actually using the list they have, running some promotions and delivering this stuff. And what you'll find is restaurants can still succeed in this. So if you do that, uh, you're going to succeed. And, and there's going to be restrictions really on a lot of businesses right now. So if you have to like cherry pick the perfect niche, you're going to have a hard time. So my two cents is figure out how to be a source of immediate cash flow. Like what kind of campaign? Don't be thinking about like, how can I over six months bring them new customers? Think about how can I bring them some money in four days or three days or two days or today? And almost always it's using the customers they already have. Kevin, I'm new to Facebook prospecting for my agency. How do you do, how do you conduct outreach effectively without using the, can you handle more client script? Kevin, uh, the can you handle more client script works especially well if you're specific about the types of clients, right? So if I reach out to um, injury lawyers and I say, um, can you handle any more motorcycle cases? It's far, far more believable. So I know it's probably an overused script in a lot of ways, but it fucking works. Uh, now, having said that, there's lots of ways you can open up with people. One is um, simply talking about them. Another way is to uh, talk about a problem they didn't know they had. So if they're like on page seven of Google, you go, hey, I'm just doing a search. You're on page seven of Google and there's all these like 60 competitors ahead of you. Did you know that? So those can all work as well. There's lots of different ways you can do it. You can just directly make an offer, but I'll tell you the can you handle more in a specific type of client just works. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't try and reinvent the wheel here. I would stick with what works. Gabby, when it comes to reaching out to businesses on Facebook, um, is it better to reach out to the business page or the, uh, through their personal profile? Not everyone is super active on Facebook, especially messenger. Gabby, it depends on the kind of business you're dealing with. And the simplest way I can say it is go where the business already is. So when I started working with lawyers, they're, they're far more active on LinkedIn than they are on Facebook because that's how they network with each other. So I just went to LinkedIn. And that's not because I'm like so in love with LinkedIn. When I'm dealing with like coaches, because I've done some stuff with online coaches and stuff, I go to the groups that they're active in on Facebook because that's where they are. And when I'm dealing with like kind of what I call like the rednecky trades, 
like roofers and contractors, they tend to almost not even have internet profiles at all. So I'll either just call them the old fashioned way or have someone call them or use the email on their website because those people are not sitting around checking to Facebook. So there's no one size fits all answer. It just go where your market is. So if they're, if they're using their personal profile, use it. But if they use their Facebook page, use that. And if they're not on any of those, go where they are. Steven, I have a prospect who wants a free trial. His average profit margin per sale is 900 bucks to justify paying a $1,500 per month retainer, not including ad spend. So basically $2,000 a month. He will need to see at least two sales from the 14-day free trial. Is this too low or should I run the free trial for him? Steven, it depends on your experience level of the project. I would never, never, never in a free trial situation try and learn on the job because it's just not enough time to make it work if you don't already have campaigns that you can swipe from other clients. So in those situations, if I'm doing a free trial, almost always, and there's a deeper methodology here that says you're, you're probably going to try and convince them to get strangers to buy, but almost always they have customers and people that would buy from them now um, that you can work with way easier in your 14 day trial. So instead of trying to convince strangers on your 14 day trial, why not try and convince the people that are, you know, have already proven they can buy, right? Like, so you think about the restaurant example from Tanner earlier. Yeah, you can get strangers to come off the street and come eat there, but there's probably somebody who comes in there every Tuesday that you could also convince to come in on a Thursday. So um, the only time I would ever do a trial with cold traffic is if I have campaigns that are like proven to work. Like if I have a bunch of campaigns that work in California and New York and I can just swap them in Idaho and then there's no thinking, that's the only way I would do that. Because otherwise what's going to happen is you're just going to take their money for 14 days and they're not going to stay and you're going to lose them and it won't be good for either of you. Um, Vincent, for those of you agency owners that give a detailed report at the end of the month for your clients, what do you like to use to create those? Vincent, I've used all of the software at one point or another, especially when I did a lot of SEO. And what I found is when you run reports, half the time, or I'd say like 80% of the time, clients have no idea what they're even reading or what it means or what's important to look at. And so they ask you to explain it to them. And then you got to like dumb it down and explain it. I've found that I don't use any software at all. We just make a little five minute video on Loom and we focus on the four things. The results, the time, the timelines, the cost, and the communication. If you do those four things, you can make uh, a little four-minute video that explains to them what you're doing, why you're doing it in plain English, and clients fucking love it because it, it explains to them. And always, by the way, because setting expectations is so important, set expectations like that you can easily exceed. So let me give you an example. Let's just say – you think you can get the client $5 leads in his niche from Facebook ads to sign up to his email list. Well, tell him you think you can get 12 so that when he sees them at five, you go, actually, we're way ahead of the mark here because we're exceeding the expectation. If the interesting thing is if you get $5 leads and they don't know $5 leads is good, they won't think you're doing a good job. So you set those expectations in those four key areas. Again, shameless plug, but you can get it for free. I love you guys. And I, I seriously want, I put my, I put a lot of good things in here so you guys can win in this economy. So um, grab a copy. Ryan, what email marketing software would you recommend besides HubSpot and MailChimp? Actually, I've never used HubSpot, Ryan, but I've used them all from Infusionsoft and ActiveCampaign and Constant Contact and Aweber and MailChimp and you name it, and Entreport. And I'll tell you, I started using Aweber at the very beginning and it's the simplest one to use and it's the best for a beginner and then what I found is I wanted more features and so eventually I started using um, Infusionsoft but just found it it's really pricey it's confusing as fuck to use they call it Confusionsoft and so I, I for many years ran with active campaign which is kind of like Infusionsoft Lite but way way cheaper and inevitably I ended up coming back to Aweber and the reason I came back to Aweber is, is because I started doing a little test to measure how long did it take me to set up a campaign to like literally send an email. Cause I'm like, you can only make money if, if, and you can only help somebody if the email gets out the door and you're following up with them. And I found 
because of Aweber's simplicity, it was the easiest one to use and they have really good deliver deliverability. So what I found is Aweber worked best for us because it's just the quickest to use. So I would say it's taken me 10 years to come full circle back to them, but I would totally use them again. And I, and I do right now, and I would suggest you use them as well. Um, Reinhardt, what are your thoughts on SEO? Um, it's a useful tool, Reinhardt, but I'll tell you, most people use it way the fuck out of order. And so I found this with um, all kinds of businesses where I, when I first started, I did SEO. And what would happen is like you would get somebody to rank. And in those days, it was easier. There wasn't as much craziness in Google. But what inevitably would happen is some clients would rank and make billions, like not billions, but, you know, they would like make Dr. Evil kind of money and the phone would ring all day long and other clients wouldn't. And I realized they had never really fixed their offer. They never fixed their positioning. They never fixed their niche. And so they were just throwing a bunch of traffic at something that had never proven to work. A lot of people start with SEO because it's free. And it's actually the worst place to start. It's probably like the 10 or 12th working thing that you should add. So once you have your stuff proven organically, like your offer actually converts, and then you've got it working with paid traffic, that's the point when I would introduce SEO. If you do it before then, you can really fuck things up. And this is also true for local businesses. Like if their word of mouth, if their offline stuff is not working and their website doesn't convert with paid traffic, SEOing it is not going to work any better, right? Like it's, you got to get that offer in place working or you're just going to, you're just going to fail faster. You're going to fail with more Google traffic. So uh, that's my thoughts on SEO. And what I've learned is after you do SEO long enough, you realize this is just my personal feel. Unless you love SEO, which there are some people who do, there are far easier ways to make money than with SEO that require a lot less headaches. And I would suggest using some of those. Kevin, how many VAs did you hire before you made your first great VI, VA hire? VA stands for virtual assistant, for those of you who don't know. Probably say about 10. And let me tell you, um, the question implies that I found a great person. And that's not really true. In my experience, people can be both terrible and good, the same person, depending on how you set them up. And it usually comes down to your training, to your processes, to your systematization, and how you support them and set them up. So I'll give you an example. Um, when I first hired like Filipinos to do like a bunch of writing for me, I had this like kind of like a small army of writers that, that would create content. And what I initially would do is just say, go write some articles for me. And it was really hit and miss. It was, and a lot more miss than hit. And I would spend a lot of my time like editing. I became like uh, almost like a, a fact checker, except honest. <laughs> and I would have to like go through and edit this. And I realized like I hired these people to make my life easier and they hadn't. So one of the things I learned is to test them small a first day before I hired them. So I would give 20 people like a sample article writing and I would pay them five bucks or 10 bucks or whatever the going rate was at the time. And half of them would disappear, but half of them would come through and they would return an article and I would get maybe four good ones. And I would take those four good ones and give them a second trial assignment. What had happened is then I'd be left with two really good writers and I would you know, have my pick of either or sometimes I would take both, sometimes just one. It depended on what I needed at the situation. And then what would happen is when they would get in, I would already have training for set up, not just to how to write, but the type of articles that we needed in our niche. So at that time I needed like shit tons of plastic surgery articles. And so I had a list of 10 really good articles and I preferred people rather than trying to figure out something brilliant to say in the world of plastic surgery, which, you know, there isn't that much new to say, I would have them rewrite really great things into their own words. So we had a video that would train them on our process. And then it would also have given them training on how to do it quickly. And then it would train them on like what my expectations were for like number of articles per day and things like that. And what I expected as a good output and how, you know, we could positively work together. And what I found when I have all those things in place, almost everybody I hired was a great employee. It was very few exceptions. You know, sometimes somebody would be good for a while and then kind of tail off. But for the most part, 
it consistently produced good employees. So it wasn't really about like, I found the diamond in the rough. It's that I developed processes and systems and trainings to support them. Another way that would come up is I noticed a lot of times like Filipino culture, which I pr primarily hired in that part of the world, um, they are like kind of shy. And so what happens if they're faced with a problem, it's different than like in North America, if you don't know how to do your job, you just kind of show up and do it half-assed, <laughs> right? That's how they deal with it. Um, how the Filipinos do it is they're like afraid to bother you. So they would just not ask. Like I would get them whenever they would message me, they say oh, my Skype, whatever would be set to busy. And they'd be like, I'm really sorry to bother you. I'm like, oh no, that busy is for everybody else. You guys, I need you, you support me, so please. And I learned that once you realize like, hey, this is a thing, I dealt with that right up front. I would say, hey, I know you're gonna come up with challenges and you're not gonna be sure of something and understand that I'm not perfectly clear 100% of the time. So if, you, if there's anything you're unclear about, I want you to ask me. And that's your first line of resource. So like, I know it probably feels a little weird to ask and you don't wanna bother me, but you bother me more if you don't just ask me because then we end up just wasting time and not getting it done. And what I found is I could deal with those things before they came up. So, so much of hiring great virtual assistants are your processes. So if you're interested in that, I do have some processes I'd be happy to share with you guys. I mean, I just gave you an outline of them, but it's mostly about first day systems, trainings. You set those up and most of the people you hire will be really great. So one last shameless plug before uh, we go, if you haven't already read it, or if you know somebody who needs it, give it away free digital copies. You can get it at beyondtheagencybox.com. Or if you want, you can just shoot me a message. I'm happy to send you a PDF copy. All good, but use this stuff because this next year, uh, you know, with the shutdowns and all that could be really, really intense for a lot of you guys. And the more you, you have the ability to add cash flow and add value to businesses, you're gonna succeed where everyone else struggles. And you cannot, in this economy, underrate that skill. So, um, especially there, there's two chapters in here, one about offer making and one in here about dealing with down markets that I would highly suggest you check out. So that's all I got for you guys this week. And I uh, also wanted to mention on YouTube, I'm putting up more and more uh, stuff, kind of like inside peeks at really badass agencies and webinars and tools that we're using. So I know it's a tiny little channel and I got a shitty microphone and it's not the greatest quality, but the information itself is fucking second to none if you if you own an agency. So make sure to follow us there because I'm going to um, be adding some cool shit to your lives. Anyways, much love, guys, and peace out. I'm going to finish my juice here.